All right, guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going over the thermal expansion of materials due to a change in temperature. This video is part of a full free course on mechanics of materials. Link is here and in the description below. So the formula that we're going to be using for thermal expansion is going to be delta T is equal to alpha times the change in temperature times the length of the member. So on the left-hand side, we have the elongation due to the temperature change. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. This is the temperature change and length of material. So alpha is a constant. It is a characteristic of each material. So copper or aluminum or steel or each material will have a different coefficient of thermal expansion. Its units are going to be in per degree C or per degrees Fahrenheit, depending on what the temperature change is given to us, what units the temperature change is given to us. So this is the expression for thermal expansion, and we also have an expression for thermal strain. Let's start out by writing the general expression for strain here, which is the strain is equal to displacement over the original length of a member. We can reorganize this so we have displacement is equal to the strain times the original length of the member. So if we have our expression for thermal strain, which is just dt is equal to alpha delta t times l, then we can substitute our thermal expansion for what we have here in a more general term for displacement. So we'll have strain times the original length is equal to alpha delta t times l, and these l's are going to cancel out and we'll just be left with our thermal strain, which is just equal to alpha times delta t. Now, if a member is unconstrained and it undergoes a temperature change, it will undergo a thermal strain, so it will expand or contract depending if it's heating or cooling, but there will be no associated stress with an unconstrained member. If it is constrained, like if there's a reaction on both ends, then it will try to elongate, but the reactions will hold it in place and it'll be like pushing against them and that's going to be causing internal stresses. What I mean by this is an example like this where we have um, a member that's connected to a wall on one side and is free on the other side. So if we get an expansion or if we get a change in temperature, so if the system heats up or the material heats up, then the rod will be free to expand outwards. And we call this distance here the elongation due to temperature change. And the expression is what we had up in the top left. So this is delta T is equal to alpha times big delta T, the change in temperature times the initial length of the rod. So we can label this on here as well, this being L. So this is an unconstrained member. It will elongate with the change in temperature. It will have strain, but there will be no stress because there's no force or there's no reaction resisting this expansion. Now, if this member was constrained, like there was a wall here or something or a pin, and when it's trying to expand due to the temperature change, it's meeting resistance at this rigid wall and it's not able to expand into it, then we need to use our method of superposition uh, from other statically indeterminate problems, which means that this original system up here is just equal to the sum of this one that we've just drawn, plus the other system where we have the bar returned to its original length, the same displacement here. So this would be a point load P, and the displacement that we get is equal uh, D, let's call it DP or even just delta, it's fine, it is equal to PL over AE. So the blue delta here and the red delta are the same, so we can equate them. We can say that this is delta T is equal to delta P. Yeah, let's give it this subscript. It's gonna be a bit more clear, delta P. So delta T, the expression is alpha, big delta T times the length, which is equal to dp, which is equal to pl over ae. We can rearrange for p and we, and we can also cancel out both of these l's. So we get our expression here, p is going to be equal to alpha times delta t times a times e. We can divide both sides by a, so we're also going to just then get p over a is equal to alpha times the change in temperature times e and P over A is also equal to stress. So our internal stress that develops in a constrained situation is equal to alpha times delta T times the modulus of elasticity. All right, let's put some numbers to this and go through an actual example here. Let's say we have this aluminum member and it has a length of two meters and a cross-sectional area of 600 millimeters squared. 
and let's say it undergoes a temperature change of 60 degrees Celsius and then we're also gonna have to know that the coefficient of thermal expansion alpha for aluminum is equal to 23 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree C so this is a table value that you would find in a textbook or online and we want to figure out what is the internal stress that develops in this member when it increases in its temperature by 60 degrees. So again, it's going to be like over here where we're going to model it as the combination of the unconstrained scenario by removing a support and letting it expand and then applying a point load to bring it back through that same amount of displacement and equating these two expressions. So delta T, this is going to be following our expression, it's going to be alpha, times the change in temperature, times the initial length, which is just equal to 23 times 10 to the negative six per degree Celsius, times the change in temperature in degrees Celsius, so it's times 60 degrees Celsius, times the initial length, which was two meters. And we're gonna get this is equal to 0 0.00276 meters or we can also express this a little bit nicer as 2.76 millimeters okay so delta t is 2.76 millimeters and that's also the the displacement that we need for delta p so let's write out our expression for that so we have delta p is equal to p l over a e and we can rearrange this to be in terms of or to solve for p so we'll have p is equal to delta AE over L, um, which is going to be equal to 2.76 millimeters times the area, which is 600 millimeters squared, times the modulus of elasticity, which is 69 gigapascals, and this is all divided by the initial length of two meters. I'm gonna write this as 2,000 millimeters and we're going to convert gigapascals. We're not gonna convert, but gigapascals can be rewritten as kilonewtons per millimeter squared. So when we look here, we have millimeter squared divided by millimeter squared, millimeters divided by millimeters. The answer after we compute this will be in kilonewtons. And so we're gonna find a value for P and it's just going to be 57.1 kilonewtons. And lastly, what we want to do is we want to find out what is the internal stress in this member. Uh, and that's just simply going to be stress is equal to force divided by the cross-sectional area. So we're going to have 57.1 kilonewtons divided by the cross-sectional area, which is 600 millimeters squared. And this just gives us a value of 0 0.095 kilonewtons per millimeter squared, which is also gigapascals uh, and then this can be converted to 95 megapascals so in reality because this member is constrained with the reactions it's not actually able to expand so we're getting a thermal stress of 95 megapascals developing internally without an actual elongation or strain happening